It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where DJ's at? I know I'm out here with you. It is another DJ round table. Yes, it is. And as always, it's great to have people here. We have a few DJs off tonight uh, on assignment. So they were not here this evening. So we have a smaller crew tonight, but we still can answer questions and have a lot of fun and talk about things. And hopefully uh, you can also ask some questions. If you're out there, uh, make sure that you uh, chime in and talk about what's going on, what you're doing, how things are going, and also uh, what's new and exciting. <laughs> first thing first, I want you all, thank you all for being here. And if you're watching this on Twitch, first thing first, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Second thing is that make sure that if you're not following the channel here, make sure you follow the channel here on Twitch. If you're over on the tubes, you're watching this on YouTube and the recap, the repeat, whatever you want to call it, or you listen to it on the podcast on YouTube, make sure you do me a favor. Make sure you hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, and tickle the bell icon so that way you know when a new episode drops. We generally drop on Mondays at 12 noon, and we go live on Twitch at 8 o'clock Central Time. So that is a fun thing with everything. A uh, couple things going on. Uh, wanted to talk to you guys about this, and I saw this in a uh, different uh, social media platform. Um, it was a uh, it was interesting how DJs do things for their customers, and I don't mean in a bad way. Custom, you know, we want to take care of our customers and help our customers out, but sometimes customers ask for things that can be how can I say kind of wrong and what I mean by wrong like it's ringing out DJ in the rain or hey you know what I'm going to give you a playlist that's so restrictive it's basically it's very uh, niche and you're not I'm, I'm basically I don't want anyone to dance or you know and what I mean by that is they give you obscure music that people generally not looking for when they come to your event. So when you have a client that you're talking to and that you're uh, dealing with and you run into them that they are kind of over the edge and they're kind of getting in their own way of, you know, making things difficult for them and for themselves, how do you overcome that? How do you talk that client off the ledge? You know, they want to, go outside and have a, a ceremony outside in the rain or if they're going to in the snow and the cold or in the extreme heat, uh, you know, bad weather, uh, or they're going to give you a playlist that is very restrictive. Or if you want to look at it this way, how about a um, not really a fun or exciting um event far as you know they basically just want you to sit back and play cocktail music and you're like people are asking okay hey, you gotta play dance music and play dance you get something to dance to and they wouldn't want anything to dance to so sometimes you run the clients at that it depends on the event and when you talk to the client event at first but you should uh broach the subject of hey um if i run into a uh, question if someone wants to ask for some stuff to dance to do you want people to dance at your event so I'm going to start with Matt in California because he always has answers for everything. <laughs> uh, when you run into a client that is, you know, basically how do you talk them off the ledge of doing something that is, you know, anti-event, you know, again, having an event out in, you know, bad weather or having an event, um, giving a restrictive uh, music that, you know, they come to you and say, Hey, I only want elevator music to be played or something like that. And people are coming in there and they're like, can you play something else? You know, how do you, how do you talk to someone and say, you know, help them help, help them make them a, make a very informed and well-designed decision. Um, like after it's booked or yeah, before after it's booked, booked or top line um, going. So we finally, um, I try to 
I mean, I personally don't care how much they put on their playlist. I mean, if I mean, they're paying me, um, but I, I've never run into a well, I think only once have I run into a whole like all they sent me was a playlist of music that they like, but it's more loungy, like you were saying. Uh, but then when I approached it, I told them, like, look, you know, I this or they'll send me a must playlist with a bunch of songs that are slow. And I'll tell them, like, hey, this playlist is great. Uh, unfortunately, with some of these, I wouldn't suggest playing them during dancing because we can only do so many slow songs during dancing. And would it be OK to play them during dinner so you still hear them? And they're like, oh, yeah, of course. So people are very uh, easy to work with. I've also, like, had must playlists where I've maybe missed one or two just because of timing. Never once has somebody said, oh, you didn't play every single one of my must plays. Like, if they're smiling, having fun at the end of the night, like, I don't think that anybody cares. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I give my clients tons of freedom. Like, there's no limits on how many must plays or do not plays. If they want to create a whole playlist for the night and say, don't play anything outside of this, hey, more power to them. Like, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. So, But here, here's one of the things in the playlist, and this, this is the reason I'm saying this. If that playlist it does not, it's not what everyone else in the room wants. So you, you're at an event, wherever that event is, a wedding, party, whatever. And again, you want to give what the client wants, but also you want to maybe talk to the client and say, hey, you're still going to have people who want to listen to you know whatever music and want to dance and have fun. They're there to do you know, whatever the event is. If it's a wedding, they're there to party, have fun, dance around, do crazy stuff. If there is if it's a birthday party, kind of the same thing. How do you talk to them and say, hey, you know what, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Customer, um, that's great, but I feel that we should maybe do this, 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 this to try and make it better for your guests. Or like I said before, bad weather. You know, I just saw on social media, a DJ decided to DJ in a pouring rainstorm. And, you know, it's like, I felt bad for that DJ, but the thing is that to me, and I, I said it, that I would have said, you know, I'm sorry, Mr. Customer and Mrs. Customer. This is, you know, this is something we shouldn't be doing because your guests are going to be miserable. I'm going to be miserable. <laughs> it's dangerous. Electricity and water doesn't mix. Stuff like that. Or if it's bad weather, you know, any kind of bad weather, snow, cold, or anything like that. How do you talk to those people down from hey, you know what, I want this, I want this, I want this. Because a lot of people have a vision of their event, and sometimes they can't get out of their own way to make sure the event is successful. Uh, I I mean, I would kind of go on my experience, you know, tell them, like, look, we've had uh, rainstorms in the past where there was no cover and everybody was miserable or, or something like that. Um, that's kind of how I deal with the weather. I mean, here in California, we don't really have rain much. Um, and most weddings are indoors, but well, some are outside. But yeah, I mean, I, I if it's the week of, I expect them to have like a rain plan in case. Um, but again, like it says in our contract, I think you just have to rely back on the contract. Like we won't DJ if it's raining, like equipment is not safe in the wetness. Like it just, it, I, I have in my contract, there must be a 36 inch clearance uh, for all doorways and there must not be any steps to get to, uh, you know, where we're DJing. So, and if there is, then, uh, you know, we'll just charge extra and figure out a plan, whether that's bringing a ramp or having extra help or whatever. So they know ahead of time, like what needs to be in place for us to DJ. I required them to provide a six foot table with a linen and it has to be set before I arrive. Thing I hate more than anything is getting to a venue and there's no table there. And I have to run around and find somebody to get me a damn dang table. It's the most annoying thing ever. So uh, I think that's it's all how you put it in your contract and and set those expectations from the beginning, because you don't want to like be that guy who's like uh, uh, when they say, "Oh, you can't DJ in the rain." Doesn't say anything about rain in your contract. So that's my that's what my vote is. But when you, when someone comes to you, okay, I'm a client. I come to you, but like. Well, I don't care what says in your contract. I still want I still want my event outside in the snow or in the cold or in whatever. Or, you know, I still want this. How do you talk to that person and say, it's in my contract, but how do you talk to them and have them understand that it's actually not to their benefit to do such I a would, thing? How do you do that? How do you talk them like, down? You know, 
I would tell them there's no the the thing I always use is I can't deliver the experience that you're paying for under those conditions. That's that's the line I use. So when they try to put me in the corner, like of in the diagram, I tell them, look, based on the setup that you purchased and my experience, I can't give you what you're looking for and what you paid for without being closer to the dance floor. Um, and usually like that wakes them up. So I've I've had coordinators completely change layouts because of that, because there's just no possible way to give them what they want. I had a couple this week for the one this weekend before I actually went to the venue to look it up. Like they had 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 their sweetheart table uh, with the ocean view in their background. And because the setup wouldn't work from the corner, which is where they were trying to put me for some silly reason, uh, they offered to move their sweetheart table to put me there uh, because they wanted the focus to be on the dancing and they wanted the show that they're paying for. So um, that's what I say. I just tell them, look, I can't guarantee the experience. I can do my best and we can try to make it work how you want it to work, but I can't guarantee this is going to be as flawless as how much you're paying me for to make it be. And that's a, an important thing is that, you know, explain to the customer, you can't get the exact outcome that, you know, they want. They're paying for you to provide services and, you know, you may not be able to do that service or provide that service. And that's the important thing. DJ Cool Thing, I know uh, you deal with customers all the time. You talk to people and, you know, it's always interesting. Um, and I was wondering um, if there is anything that you would talk to a customer or say something to a customer to uh, help them uh, understand what is a uh, a good thing to do, uh, help them make an informed decision on their event. Well, um, in terms of the weather stuff, they always look at the weather a day or so before. And like I DJed a wedding like three years ago and it was about to rain. So they moved it to an indoor venue and so that none of my DJ gear would get all messed up and we because we were going to have the ceremony outside of their house so they moved the ceremony to the shrine club and we were have we were we had an indoor um ceremony with the um the, you know the open dancing and the formalities and all that stuff and in terms of music um they actually trust me when it comes to music they let me choose Wherever I want when it comes to like cocktail hour and sometimes I ask for like a playlist for a wedding if like if there's any specific requests I can download ahead of time and I always have like I never really have any problems with guests because they always look out for me, their family and friends and I know I know I can trust them. They can trust me, and we always work. You know, it was they're very easy to work with. I've never really had anything difficult happen with my any of my clients. And when when someone comes along and says, "Hey, you know what? Um, I want to do this, this, and this, this." What uh, um, what do you usually do if someone says, "Hey, you know, I only want to have." you know, um, this kind of music, that kind of music that may be not be conducted to dance or may it be against what you think the people will want or you have guests asking so, for yeah, other stuff. Well, yeah, they, well, that gives me an idea that they're not a dancing crowd. And I would be more than honored to play the music that they requested and I would just do it and not be difficult to... To the clients okay you know it, it's it's always interesting when i see stuff on social media on people doing things or saying things or talk about things um it always um makes me uh hey guys ray here with top live it always makes me um God. always makes me uh look and think of what um maybe you look and uh, wonder what to do with certain things. And with clients, one thing I learned a long time ago, 
a lot of times people have in their mind, they have a vision of their wants and needs and so forth, so on for the night. And as someone who's a professional who does this, you know, quite a bit, especially weddings, and that's what I work on is the wedding area. Sometimes you got to talk people kind of off that ledge. They want what they want. Hey, you know what? It's 25 degrees outside. It's Chicago. It's cold. It's dark. Your guests are going to be miserable. You don't want to do this outside. Uh, I would definitely say move it inside. You know, a perfect example, we had a wedding, um, not this year, but last year, beginning of the year, uh, it snowed at the venue several inches the day before there's one of this outdoor ceremony. They want this outdoor ceremony no matter what. And finally, the um, that day, they, they sent us a message saying, uh, yeah, it snowed overnight. We can't have it outside because everything was covered in snow. So it, it's... It's one of those things that um, you sometimes have to inform people that, yeah, even if you didn't pull the trigger and say no, I would have said, or Tracy would have talked to him and said, you know, this may not be what exactly what you want. You don't want your bridesmaids or groomsmen getting cold or passing out in high heat or, you know, people being wet with snow or rain or whatever. How do you you know, how do you get past that? And that's, that's the important thing is how you do stuff. And if you uh, do things, you know, if you're going to do an event, how would you do it? How would you take it on? How would you take care of it? So I know at my my last wedding, like three years ago was for my cousin and they show me where I was going to be setting up. I was going to be in a corner and I mean, I actually accepted that and I had no other choice. That venue isn't really that big. So this is in downtown Conway and the only place for me to set up was in a corner. So I accepted where I was going to be set up and I just set up my DJ stuff, even though it looked crappy, but it's the best I can do. <laughs> yeah, it's all you can do. Mm-hmm. You try your best. You, you, yeah. again, you have a, you had to do what's your best possible. And sometimes yeah. venues will do that too. Venues will put you, you know, somewhere in an area that is less than ideal for DJ. And, and it's like, and they always have the same thing. They always have the same uh, kind of story. Well, the couple pick that. And to me, I always want to come back and say, well, you're the professional here. You could have said, Hey, you know what? This is not really good for this you shouldn't have your dj in the corner your dj should be here and there should be no tables in front of the dj between the dj and the dance floor stuff like that or hey you know what your dj shouldn't be in this dark dingy corner over here way far away from where the people are at or have tables right in front of the dj that they get blown out with speakers and you know even though we all try to make sure that we're not you know making grandma deaf We still want to make sure that, you know, the room is covered by sound. And I cannot tell you how many times that, you know, they put a table in front of the the speakers. I'm trying to make sure that even more so that no one is being hit by sound and they're not being deaf. And to the point that sometimes I'm not filling the room with music as much as I should be because I'm so worried about those people. And I have Tracy will come up and go, can you turn the volume up a little more? There's a hair. I'm like, yeah, I could do that. You know, I do, but I'm always I'm looking at the table and saying, what's going on in front? What's going on at the table? I don't want to, um, you know, again, uh, have them, uh, their ears bleeding and are deaf in front of me. That's not fun. No. Of course, Matt wants to put his dual 21s everywhere. and <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if people go deaf at my shows. They shouldn't, uh, they should know what they're getting themselves into. <laughs> I'm sure the 80 year old grandma coming in on the uh, wheel with the walker uh, wants to have uh, her hearing aid uh, squealing all night. <laughs> She'll be fine. She'll recover. She'll, be fine. After a day. She'll recover after a day or two. Take one for the team. Take yeah. one for the team. There you go. Uh, so, uh, Riley, what did you uh, bring us for dinner tonight? I've got my usual double cheeseburger and order of fries. And, yep, that's it. Oh, come on, man. 
I know you had a car show this evening and you uh, shared some in, uh, images of uh, possible rain where you were at. Oh, it came down. It, I, I was pulling up and it started raining. So by the time I actually loaded up, I'm starting to look. I'm like, yeah, we're just keeping speakers in the car tonight. And that's what we did. And it worked. What uh, sounds did you use? Uh, the facility sound system? I just used my Mackies, threw them in my car, ran an extension cord into my car. And I'm going to yeah. have to take a call in like 10 minutes. No problem. Again, we're all working. So it's it's one of the things that, you know, if you guys are watching this and you're seeing stuff, people coming in and out, it's, we're all working DJs. You know, and that's part of the deal is that uh, everyone who's on the show, they know if they have to come in or go out. You know, they, they're working, they have stuff going on. It's not a problem. Now, everyone can make every single show. I can because I'm the host and because it's, I don't want to start the show. I need to be here for you guys so we can have a show. But, you know, when everyone needs to come in or out for anything, it happens. No big deal. So, uh, Bradley, I know, uh, I, I think you know the post I was talking about earlier about who's a DJ, um, who unfortunately had DJ in the rain for a client. And, you know, I, I, I felt bad. For her. Um, I also felt bad for, um, uh, for other people who have DJ in bad weather and in bad weather and stuff like that and cold or snow or whatever. And yeah. when you have a client that is that dead set on doing whatever, um, how do you overcome that? If it's outdoors, they already know it's in my contract. We are not, go I'm not playing around with the rain and ruining any of my equipment, especially with the small fortune that all of us put into our gear. There's no reason anybody sub should subject us to that. Now, if I can find a way to make it work, be it an umbrella uh, that will, you know, keep my gear safe, I may consider it. Or there was one I did, uh, it was. Pouring, pouring rain. So I loaded part of my setup for the ceremony into the tool shed and DJed the entire ceremony out of the tool shed. And, oh, it there were two or three moments during the ceremony. It just started coming down. And with that, as soon as the sun came out, it got instantly humid. And I'm going to say it kind of ruined the rest of the day for the most part. People didn't want to go eat dinner inside the bar, the barn area because it was too hot. The cake was in the barn area, and it got so humid that in two hours, it collapsed from humidity. And we were all looking at it as it, like we were about to do speeches and go to cake cutting. Looked at the cake in our conversation, and it was sliding down as we were talking. And little bit by little bit, everything just kind of made sure that no one wanted to party that night. And that that's the hard part is that I would totally tell the customer that, um, you know, we don't want your guests to be drenched in rain, plus your wedding party, plus them, you know, the officiant, your husband or your wife or whoever they're marrying, you know, um, do you want to ruin that, you know, that outfit? Do you want to ruin the dress, the tux? whatever, do you want to charge extra fees because of the fact that it's stained or whatever because you're out in the rain and the makeup yeah. ran into something? I mean, I just did a wedding three weeks ago at Celebrations on the River, and so it was raining the whole day. The bride absolutely insisted she had to have her ceremony outside no matter what because they were paying for it. And part and parcel with that, they were paying for basically two rooms that day because they wanted their ceremony on one of the outdoor areas and their reception in the other outdoor area. So they basically paid for two rooms and she, it happened. Ceremony was outside. I took cover inside the bar so I could have, I could see everything. And since it's celebrations, we use their, their in-house mics. They're all Sennheisers. They're all looped into a master control panel. And they've got paddles for their mics everywhere. 
So there's never a dropout or anything like that. But with that, by the time the ceremony was over and their guests went inside in the air conditioning, it was kind of brutal because now you've got a bunch of soaking wet people that are frozen. Yeah. So and that's, 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 that's the worst thing ever is because again, your guests are miserable then. And then you deal with, you know, unhappy guests. And that's, that's the thing is that explain that to a, 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 again, a client. And that's sometimes you have to talk them down off that ledge and say, you know, maybe you shouldn't be doing that. Maybe you should be doing something else. Exactly. You know, and we're also got a guest here tonight as well. Um, Ray here from uh, uh, Top Light USA. He came in tonight because I wanted to get his uh, information out there on the show for, he has a couple cool booths. And um, I want to thank you, Ray, for coming in. And uh, real quick. Oh, thank you wrap- for having me. Well, no, I'll thank be right you. Back. I'm going to take this call. No problem. Go ahead. Um, so I want to thank you for coming in tonight. And uh, we're just wrapping up talking about a couple of things going on. Uh, but I wanted to ask you about your uh, your booth. I saw that you have some really cool booths. I will tell you that. Um, are you coming to Marquee? Because I'm in Chicago. No, he only goes to Nam, the real show. Oh, <laughs> I saw. I'm him sure at, he wants I to go met, to every met, show. Are you, are you going? Nam, but I'm sure are you going? To, are you coming to Marquee in uh, with the next week? Right. Yes, sir. Um, thank you for uh, having me uh, in your show. I appreciate it. Yes, we will be at the Marquis show uh, in a couple of weeks. We already ship all our products that we're going to be exhibiting at the show, uh, I think yesterday uh, or a couple of days ago. And uh, it's on its way there now. So definitely cool. we'll be there. Are you guys going to be there? Um, I'm going to try and make it. I'm going to try and visit. Uh, unfortunately, it all boils down to scheduling. I'm... We're having a marquee show is actually um, right by my wife's work. So she actually works in one of the office buildings, uh, basically a few blocks away from where marquee is okay. at. So I'm very, I grew up not far from it, uh, from there in the city. And um, I'd like to make it, but it all boils down to schedule like everything else. You know, I'm a local, so I can go anytime I want to, but it's also, it's like, when do I have time to do it? <laughs> no, I but, agree. So, it, it's it's one of the things that uh, please uh, I, I will tell you this. Reach out to me if you want some uh, uh, sample some unique Chicago foods not far from there. Uh, <laughs> love to I'd love to catch up with you at least one of the nights or something like that. At least say hi to you in person and um, and buy you buy you something to drink. You know, I could buy you a coke at least. You know, or something. You know, but um, one of the things I I, I, I put into the uh, chat here the link for. Uh, the booth, which is their newest booth from Top Light, U- uh, Top Light DJ, uh, they have this booth there, um, and you're gonna have the, the new booth at the show, correct? Yes, sir. We're gonna have both the older model, which is the 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 video DJ booth uh, that 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 holds uh, the video wall, and then the new one, which is the TV version. And I also saw there's two uh, LED booths available. One is less expensive, one's more expensive. Can you explain the difference between the two booths? Um, the video wall DJ booth, we have two sizes. One is a five-footer, and then one is for a six-footer. We actually made the six-footer a little later uh, after the five-footer was made due to the, the, the amount of DJs that were requesting it. Uh, I noticed that there's a lot of DJs that, that were, were doing um, big parties, like high schools, um, you know, like, any events that consist more than a thousand people, uh, the DJs that had contacted me wanted a bigger DJ video, uh, DJ booth. So we created a six panel one and that's basically for that type of events. So they can stick out, you know, more than the five footer. It is the five uh, footer is a little bit more portable. It is very, very cool. And I've seen the videos on there and I know, uh, like Hupner has their booth, which you can attach. TV in front. I have the um, uh, Pro X booth, which you could attach a TV in the front. Nice booths. But when I saw this new booth, uh, the Prism DJ booth that you guys came out with, that the sides fold in. And I saw the video you put out there. I was like, wow, this is really, really cool. It has LED lights in the side. You can pick white or black. Uh, You can put your own TV in the front. So that way it kind of, the nice thing with that is they have something going on on TV you can go to Walmart and buy another TV and put a TV in there 
fairly inexpensively. Now, again, I'm not saying TVs are cheap, but you can at least do that with that booth. You can you replace a TV, something should happen, versus the LED panels, which can be pricey for replacement if something should happen, God forbid. Uh, but I was looking at, it, at that, and a cool thing that really caught my eye, it, I think it's your warehouse. You're actually rolling it through the warehouse, folded in half, and the lights are on. I'm, I take it you have a battery on there or something like that, turn the lights on to the side. But yes. I'm like, that is cool as all heck. Cause you know, not just the lights going around, because I'm like, oh, about lights as a DJ, but you actually fold the booth and roll it in. And I know two of the DJs here have SUVs. Actually, uh, yeah, two of the DJs here have SUVs right now. Um, Brentley has a Ford uh, E350 or 250 van. I have a Sprinter. So I have a van. Oh. Brentley has a van. But like DJ Salsas in California, he has a Tahoe. DJ mm -hmm. Cool Thing, which is Hunter, he is uh, in South Carolina. He has an SUV, uh, Nissan Pathfinder. So the thing is that I'm like looking at him like, that is something that you could put into an SUV. Mm -hmm. You know, you just need two people to pick it up, put it in there nicely and secure it so that way nothing touches the front. And I'm like, that is the smartest thing I've ever seen because Brentley actually has one of the uh, Toadmatic booths, which are beautiful booths, but you can't collapse it down. And how do you get it onto a vehicle? You got to have a ramp or something to get it right. in. There. I'm like, this is very, very smart. So whoever whoever came up with that, if you came up with it, you deserve a high five, sir. Uh, if someone else came up <laughs> with you. it, you they deserve a high five because <laughs> this right here is smart because it gives you the portability that you want in a booth, but also you want the television in the front. You want to have that video look. You want that nice command center that you could put up your XZ on or your SX2 on or, or your, you know, your Rain, whatever, and have that presence of everything, have that good DJ furniture look. But at the end of the night, you and another person could easily put it in the back of a very small trailer or a back right. of an SUV. And I'm I just very, very impressed with it. Again, if you guys are tu uh, tuning in now, I do have in the chat a link to uh, Top Light DJ's um, page there with the booth. If you're watching this on YouTube later on, I will have it down in the chat. So you can look down below and see and go right to the page. Uh, they have a special deal right now. So if you go there, there's a special, they have a special price right now. Uh, again, they will be at Marquee. So if you're in the Midwest, you want to go to Marquee. Uh, DJX, are you going out to DJX in, in uh, Atlantic City? Yes. Yes, we will be there too. Okay. So Atlantic City, we'll DJX, each coasters. And then, uh, of course, Matt is in the uh, L.A. area, so you got to wait till next year to see it out there. But I'll be at, I'll be at DJ Expo. I'm going. Oh, you will be at DJ Expo? Well, everything. there you go. Yes. Yes. So I, I guess I guess Matt, you got to go say hi to Ray if Ray is there or one of the other uh, reps there from uh, I, I saw, Hoplite. I saw I saw their stuff at, at NAMM, and I thought it was so cool. And then I saw the price, and I was like, yeah, I can't afford that. <laughs> you can afford it? You got to think I, about I've it. always... You got to think about this. It's an investment. And again, yeah, yeah. price, I and again, the price they have on the website right now for that, it's not including a TV. They have a non-TV one. They have a TV one. But for the, for the price of the unit plus a TV, yeah, you're 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 north of three grand for everything right now, the current price. This is not 20 years yeah. from now. <laughs> we talk about 2024, June of 2024 pricing. Um, but you look at that, that is an investment. And if you look at $300 per wedding, for 10 right. weddings, that kind of pays off most of that right there. If you look if at I, and do over 20 weddings, that's like $150 a wedding cost yeah. to pay I like, for I like that. The, I like the LED one with the LED screens because I've always wanted that look. But uh, I don't know. I'll, I'm looking at to like a DJ booth maybe later this year or next year in the upgrade season because it's uh, out here. There's some guys that have fancy booths, but every i've asked every single one of them and none of them can say that they charge more for a podium booth versus you know the clients really don't it's, care it's the look I, it's the look it's the look yeah it looks it looks it looks cool <laughs> and you know the weight it's, on it you know uh, on here i'm i'm reading right here the weight's 138 pounds with a t uh, standard tv on it so you it know depends 138 on the TV. pounds that's yeah it, not, it, it, it depends on the tv that you're using 
because that the TV that we're actually putting in there is pretty heavy. I noticed that uh, without the TV, it only weighs 73 pounds. So there you go. Yeah. Be mindful of that when you're doing it. Now, is there a cover that you can order from uh, Top Light? Yes, we'll have a, a padded cover uh, for that also. We're still designing the, the style of padded cover um, because we don't we haven't determined whether we're going to design the padded cover when it's folded or when it's fully assembled. Now, you know, the, this, this Prism DJ booth is actually designed by actual DJs who gave us their feedback. You know, they were the one who wanted this to fold. And, and the reason why we had it designed folding is because originally the, the, the video wall DJ booth that we had couldn't fold. It was a fixed uh, um, setup. <laughs> and a lot of people like it. The only problem that they had was it was bulky. So that's how this design actually came about, was because of the DJ's request, wanting it to be more portable, more lighter, uh, lighter in weight, and, and wanting to fold. And you know the cool thing is it has some um, some stuff with it, which are optional on other manufacturers. Uh, the headphone uh, holder, uh, a drink holder, which you know you get a vehicle today. Every vehicle, you, especially some of these guys have minivans. They have like thirty drink holders and a couple of juice box holders because they're designed for families, not for DJs. Yeah. But as a DJ, you can have like thirty bottles of water throughout your vehicle, and every two feet have a drink, not to worry about, never be dehydrated. But it's nice to know that you can have a bottle water next to you away from it and secure not next to your equipment that could fall over it's on to the side in the front you can have it in the corner headphone microphone holder and you know i see all the times a lot of the djs use like a it uh, looks like a rubber band that's kind of like um has like a little body on it so that the microphone doesn't roll you have this you put the microphone in a microphone holder you don't have to worry about a microphone falling or tripping or, you know, getting messed up with anything. And it, there, there, there's so much smart ideas in this uh, unit. Um, I'm glad you guys came out with it. And I'm glad that you guys had this out there. And now the other question is on this unit, it says pre-sale. When is it going to start shipping? Uh, it's going to ship out within five to six weeks. We're already manufacturing uh, um we're, we're already doing the mass production on it because we did have a, a pretty positive feedback when we posted it on the uh, DIY DJ groups and uh, on my face, my timeline, Facebook. Um, we got a, quite a few orders in there. So we're, we're actually manufacturing it as we speak. And, uh, you know, everybody's got a, a good deal on them. Um, just like the, the, the LED video DJ booth. I don't know if you, uh, if you watch or you remember before when we launched it as a pre-sale, we only sold it for 3,500. Yes. And that includes and the video walls and controllers, yeah. Yeah, now it's much and, more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, 3,500 is, is feasible. And a lot of, we've gotten, uh, I would say at least 30 DJs that took advantage of that price. Yeah, so, someone was, uh, I know when you guys were here last year, uh, one of the DJs saw it and he wanted it really bad. And he's like, I don't know if I can, I could do it. I, and I kind of broke it down for him. You know, if you pay for it over, you figure how many weddings you have, how many events you have that you can use it on. You can't use it for every event. It's not, you know, it, it, it's, I always equate this to if you, if the only tool you have in your toolbox is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So no, this right. is not an every single event thing. This is something that you bring to those better, higher end, more paid events that people want that unique look to it. And even you take half your events, not all your events, half your events and say, hey, I'm going to bring this out to those events. And you, let's say you have 10 events that are like right. you have 20 events throughout the whole entire year. 10 events are your more expensive, higher package. Your clientele doesn't mind paying for it. You take that price, divide it by 10, and then you go, okay, fine, great. I'm going to, between this year and next year, it will pay for itself. So I have 10 events this year, 10 events next year. That's 20 events. You take that price for everything, divide over it. You see what the cost is per event. It kind of pays for itself. And the nice thing, it gives you something different in the market than a lot of guys with the and I call it the Model T kind of look, the 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 bun booth and stuff like that, which is out front. Mm -hmm. Cool look, 
they have behind them a huge display of uh, a gear behind a facade, sound equipment and whatever. And they have a few things in the bun booth. The bun booth is a cool look. It has that cool sleek look to it. But right. for me personally, again, I like when I do the booth with a TV in front because I like doing music videos. The Prism uh, booth as well as the LED bo uh, booth, both of those I feel give a much stronger presence than well, it's the nicer other if you can do a monograms too. It's a lot easier to do the monograms. Yeah, and don't don't DJ charge a lot of money for monograms. No, I give them for free basically. But <laughs> <laughs> in theory, some people get away with three hundred dollars, buddy. I, but it's I a lot easier to do the monograms nowadays. I do, I do, I do uh, project, uh, projectogram, and I do the motion gobos, and you know, I. I charge three fifty for that for the motion gobos, and when you have a television in front, you just write an HDMI cord into your computer. And if you want to do two separate computers, have one computer just to run the monogram, or you run into the background on your uh, computer you you're DJing off of. You have all the gear there, and especially right. you know some of the guys. You know, I'm not an Apple guy. Well, the guys who are Apple guys, you know, you have a lot of options there. Apple is a usually a powerful computer that can do that. So I, I know my computer could do it because it's a gaming computer. But even if you had run two computers to run the one for the monogram, one for that, I think it gives a unique look. It's not the same thing in the market. And that's one of the things that people should be looking at, how to differentiate yourself from one DJ service to another DJ service. And I think the LED uh, lights in the side are really cool, especially the dance floor opens up. It kind of gives more energy to the area. Um, I like indirect lighting, uh, the you know bouncing off light off the ceiling with, with up lights. I run Asteras, uh, so I like to have that more of the look of light, but not blind people. And I think this right here helps with that because you There's... get some light, you get some effects in your booth to make you stand out and when the dance floor is open and really gives you that beautiful, nice look and a DJ gear. Um, uh, question. Does... Does it come with a covering for the bottom for the wheels? Um, on the low profile, we don't have one made for the low profile wheels, but on but those wheels are changeable. Like if you look underneath the 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 Prism DJ booth, it has two types of wheel pattern uh, for the for the casters. So you can easily take out the the smaller wheels and replace it with the bigger wheels. And we are making a wheel cover for those, so okay. it doesn't look so too high off the ground. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I like I like to just be flush with the ground with mine, but it's very yeah. nice. I mean, hey, you could do shop pay with it too. So twelve payments of two hundred and thirty five dollars, two hundred and forty three dollars and seventy cents. There you go, right there. And yes, I, I think that probably what you could do is you could probably get a um, a piece of fabric from like you know one of uh, one of the um, I want to say fabric stores, a uh, well, fabric store or one of the. Um, um, like Michael's or something like that, or Hobby Lobby, get some white fabric or black fabric, depending on what it is, and figure out a way to run, maybe run some Velcro across the bottom and have Velcro stitch on the fabric. And I put that right across the bottom to have a skirt down there just to cover the wheels so no one sees it. Now, Bruntley does have the Toad Maddock booth, which I know he loves, and he doesn't skirt the bottom of there, and the wheels are, are much bigger wheels, and they're much more visible these ugly. right here are much more. I don't want to see wheels. Wheels are ugly. The reason is when I ordered it, Toad sent me the black skirt, and I even saw him at Midwest. He's like, "Oh yeah, I still owe you a white skirt." I'm like, "Whatever." And so I never really cared about it. But over the weekend, I actually got some lumber and Velcro and measured everything out. And I'm gonna put the pieces together if I have time tomorrow, so I can just Velcro the wheel the covers on. So I'm just gonna use lumber and a straight white piece. But I love my toad. The thing, the thing, like, and amazingly, it's actually taken about a four foot drop on one of the wheels and held up. Nothing fell apart. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I personally use the Rockville Rock booth and I'm still pretty good with that. I was thinking about it, but the price is too high for me. But it looks cool. Oh, yeah. And that, that's the thing is that, you know, it's, it's not for everyone, but, this is a really cool, and the black, I, I tell you, the black looks very, very nice. If you're not an all-white DJ, you don't want the, the all-white look, 
the black on it again looks beautiful on that booth and the other thing is the led booth is that chrome that that like gunmetal chrome kind of look which is pretty cool as well and it gives you it, it, it kind of gives you the white feel or the black feel depending on what you're doing and kind of emulates what's around you which gives a real cool thing i, I think that you know uh top light has done a lot of great things and photo booths too i know you guys do photo booths what do you guys oh, yeah. not do besides sell dj yeah. software what do you guys not do over there they're with you're with rba right yes out sir of, yeah out of, they're out of chino right here mm -hmm. they're really good booths. i i i when i buy a second one because i have the booth the booth i have i love but i got it from photo booth international and spent like 7500 which is absurd but i had no clue how to do anything with the photo booth but now I've basically changed out the computer, the flash, everything in there. So like the next time I buy a photo booth, it's going to be a shell. And you guys have probably from you guys, because I don't want to buy one from China. And I know RBA makes some quality No, and, and again, they're right here. Their warehouse is right there in California. Yeah. They're in Chino, which you know right where you're, you're getting it from. And if you have a problem, I, I, I this is one of the things. Their sister company, Revo Spin. I bought one of the wedding guest audiobooks. You know, this is kind of see it there. I have two of these. I bought one and unfortunately had a problem with it. I contacted their customer service. Uh, their customer service was like, hey, you know what? Take a video showing what it is. If something we can figure out what it is, we'll figure it out and tell you what you're doing wrong. I'm like, hey, fantastic. So right here in, in the office, <laughs> my wife held my phone, did a quick video, uploaded it to them. A couple of days later, I got an email from them saying, we're replacing it. No questions asked. We're sending it to you. We have your information. I was like, really? They're like, yeah. We're sending you a new one. No no problem. We're sorry. I'm like, that is cool as all heck. So I know from dealing with them, especially having a problem with one of their products, that it won't charge, won't do anything. It's one thing that they stand behind what they sell. And I would definitely recommend anyone out there looking. I know this phone right here, is on that website, that link right there. You can go to the top of the page and look around stuff. They have tons of products out there. I really tell you to look. One of the things you should have in your you know, in your toolbox is one of those phones because it's nice to have and you can sell that. We sell it all the time for our clients and take the you know audio off it, put it on a thumb drive, give them a thumb drive at the end of the night. They're happy as all heck. And like I said before, being a client, being a customer of them, of their, of their company, I know what they do. I know how they do things. And I watch Ray's videos all the time on, on Facebook and stuff like that. I see how passionate he is on stuff and as well as everyone else who works for uh, the company. They really care about the DJs. And you heard what he said before that they were listening to us, the DJs, giving feedback saying, hey, we like to have a booth that collapses. Boom, what do we get? A booth that collapses. So DJ Brantley, as someone who has a Toadmatic, and I know I sent you the link to uh, about this booth, what do you think about it? I dig it. I mean, <clears throat> the all, honestly, the only reason I got the Toad was the sheer, it was honestly a joke when I did it, but it was the convenience of being able to literally leave lacrosse, go to Midwest DJs Live, and take it home after the conference. That was the biggest factor in me buying it. My business partner came to me New Year's Eve last year and goes, you still want one? I'm like, today's the last day to get the order, and isn't it? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, you know what? And we were joking, and I'd seen our profit and loss statement for the year and my percentage. I'm like, just do it. Go. And <laughs> he knew I was going to do it, and he came to – he literally came to lacrosse on his way to his wedding that day that, on New Year's Eve, said hi to me. Made the joke, and I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Fine, let's go for it. And now I've considered, like I said, you even brought it up, I want a black counterpart to it now. You want a black one and a white one, and depending which way you go. And that's the same thing with this. They're, they're both black and white. And it's, but instead of doing the big, huge one from Toad, this right here with the – again, you buy your own TV, put your own TV on there. It's about the same price as Toad, but this folds flat, which – in your van, again, I know you got E E350, E250 van. 350. Uh, yeah. So you have, you know, a, a Ford van. There right there, I, I had started out with a Chevy Express van. And again, 
lots of room, but it fills up very quickly with DJ gear, especially your subwoofers and speakers yep. and so forth. So having an availability that's, that's actually the full kind of flat, not it's not flat as a pancake, it makes it a much smaller of, of a presence. I think that is very, very important. And then like Ray said earlier that you know the, the weight they're giving in there is with a heavier TV. So look at the weight of the TV and look at the weight of the unit. And he said, what, you said 78 pounds, right, Ray? 72 pounds. 72 pounds is the booth itself, plus the weight of the TV. So you put a 65-inch TV here. If you go to a little better quality TV, and this is one of the things, I'm not saying you should buy a top-of-the-line AK TV, but if you go to the little better quality TVs that are thinner, they're generally yeah. less weight. And they have a little better screen. Now, the other thing else I would recommend doing, anyone who buys one, make sure you buy the warranty from whatever store you're buying from. Because if something goes wrong with that TV, you want to be able to take it back there and you know have it exchanged or have it repaired or whatever with you and that store, whether you buy from Walmart or Best Buy or whatever store you buy from. But the thing is that I could tell you on the other end with uh, with Ray's company, they really do have great customer service. Again, I've been through it. Tracy and I have been through with them. And I talked to her about, you know, before I reached out to Ray, asked Ray to come on the show. I said, with your opinion on how they are, would you ever want to buy something from them again? She said, not without a problem because of how they took care of us. And that Thank to you. me is a big, huge thing is that how companies take care of, you know, your customers. And we try to cut, take care of our customers a lot. And again, I cannot thank you to thank your customer service team that did a heck of a job. And we were just like, wow, that that is one of the most painless times because we've had other companies that, you know, stuff breaks. Okay, where do we get sent for service? What do we need to do? And they kind of I'm, like run around. <laughs> sorry. Um, sorry. Two other uh, quick, two other quick questions. Two other quick questions on your booth. So we have that. Um, I noticed that there's two shelves, mm -hmm. one top of the other. Can you take one shelf off, just use one shelf, or do you have to use both shelves? Yes. So the reason why we did two shelves is because we know some DJs want to use their controllers. And if it's just an, uh, a naked controller and they just want to set it on top, then they want to use the first shelf. But I also know that there's a lot of DJs that doesn't want to take out their controllers from the Odyssey cases or if they have a pro cases, you know, the road cases. So if they take out the top shelf, it's it's about 10 inches deep, I would say. So they can, you know, they can hide their, um, their road case behind that DJ booth and still give that modern uh, feel of it, you know, of that look of their setups when they're at their event. So... You know, it's it's just a different uh, uh, look. But yeah, you could take out one or the other of the shelves. And that's an important thing. It gives you flexibility. So like myself who has a uh, Odyssey case and I have the top shelf. Yeah, I like sliding the top shelf back and forth. I'm one of those guys. <laughs> um, yeah. I could use that case, which has my microphone below and stuff like that. So use yes. that case with this booth. They don't see my case. They see maybe the, the shelf and the, the computer, and nothing yep. else. It's like, not like any. It's it's like any other um, booth that you have. You only see the computer, which is great, and you have everything else hidden. So right again, you have a cup holder, you have a microphone holder, you have a headphone holder. If you you know you have an area to put down paperwork, your know, information, it, it, it gives you a very versatile uh, workspace. Plus, there's little holes in the corner. I saw to run cables down, to run cables out. So you have all this stuff and you have all this great, you know, options on it. I would definitely say if you're in the market for a, a, a nice, cool looking booth, that's one of the things. Oh, one other question also I had from somebody asked, asked me, the LED lights in the side, is it only one thing it does or can you control the color? Can you tell, hey, I want blue on the side or I want red or I want green? There are two you can control it. There's a remote control and you can control it. You can have all those colors and some uh, actions on it too. And yeah. is and your sound active the, on it? Uh, I don't think it's sound activated. Okay. It's just RGB, yeah. And it also does come with a optional racks. It's automatically, when you order it, it automatically comes with a, a rack mount that is removable. 
but it's optional because some DJs don't have rack mountable items and then some DJs do have some. So we designed the rack mountable. Uh, it's a nine space rack mount that they can use should they want it. It's just optional. But that it comes cool. with it. That gives that gives so much flexibility oh, wow. to a booth. It's not even funny. And, you know, in the, you in the middle, the underneath yeah. it, in the middle, the rack. Yes, sir. Okay, that's where it is. But you can't you can't move it with stuff in the rack, can you? You can. It's got wheels on it, so it slides out. Um, so you can travel, you know, you can travel it separately. You just have to unplug it. That's the thing. But you oh. can also travel. You don't have to do that. You could actually travel with it also. It really oh. depends on, on the DJ uh, and the predicament that they're in. So say, for instance, they have, uh, they have to go to an elevator, you know, so chances are it's going to... They're gonna have to take it out, you know. It's, you know, it it'll fit in the elevator as long as, um, you know, they take it out and fold it. Oh, okay, and, I got you. And the other thing you can get without a monitor. So if you don't want a monitor, you get all black with a black front. You can get that, and so have the sides lit up. And you can get also a white one if you wanted to. Um, right. Three sixty photo booth. If you're looking for a three sixty photo booth. We know a company that has that, and they actually raise here with it too. Uh, 360 photo was a cool thing they have here. Uh, LED dance floors. You want to do an LED dance floor? Again, it's 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 like you look you look at everything they have there, and you're like, wow, they have all this cool stuff. Uh, you know, it, it's 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 one of the places you go looking. And again, a lot of DJs they go to Amazon, they look on Amazon, or they they do want to go to companies in China. The thing is that when you, again, a lot of stuff is made in China. I'm sure this stuff is, a lot of stuff's made in China, but you have the warranty with, you know, Top Light that something goes wrong. You can call them up. They're in California. They're right in by Sosa's house. Heck, Sosa probably go over and hand sign over there on the box saying, hey, thanks, you know. <laughs> um, thanks for ordering this. You know, you can probably give an autograph or something, but uh, it's one of the things that if you're looking at stuff and you're wanting to get stuff, it's a great company to buy stuff from. And again, they have a great warranty, great customer service. And I definitely would say as a customer myself, again, I have one small thing, not an expensive item, not like, you know, a $2,000 item. We're talking, you know, a $100, $100 item. It's one of the things that blew me away that they took care of me. Didn't matter if I spent $1 or you spent $1,000, they take care of their customers. They took care of me. So uh, that's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why I wanted to ring out here. Plus, that booth right there, man. That's that prison booth. It, it, it's it's fire. Yeah. Well, we're we're grateful. Yeah. Oh, you, you guys, you guys knocked a home run on that one. And again, you're coming here to Marquee, um, with next week, right? Mar Marquee's next week, right? Remember correctly. Yes. So next week, Marquee, and then they're going to DJX as well as a few other shows. So make sure you follow them. No problem, Matt. Go ahead to hop off. I'll see you Thanks, later. Ray. Thank, Thank you. you so much. But uh, make sure you follow them, follow their social media. Make sure you follow Ray on the social media. I got to get Ray's social media up there too on Facebook. Make sure Thanks, you follow buddy. him. Uh, but make sure you go there and you know, show him some love. But it's it's one of the things that if you're looking for stuff, and we've had a guy who makes custom boots out east, heck of a job. If you don't want to do custom built that you're going to pay a little more dollars for, you want something that you can open out of the box and have something also nice with a TV in front, this is this is where to go. And again, this is one of the things that when you're looking at product, you're looking at stuff, there's a lot of manufacturers out there, but I dealt with them before and I know how great a customer service they are. I definitely would say this should be on the top of your list to look at. And if you're in one of the, you're in the Midwest or you're out East for DJX, make sure you stop by. They're going to have these booths there. Take a look at them. If they're half as good looking in in person as they are online, you got a home run right there. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to spend the money. And again, Ray, thank you so much for coming in tonight. I appreciate thank coming into the DJ Roundtable. I wish I had some more DJs here tonight, but everybody's got stuff going on. I got one guy, air conditioning broke. Another one's got clients. You know, <laughs> even Brentley was a little bit late because he had a, a car show tonight. So got car working showing. DJs here. Yeah, I got what? working <laughs> Got a bunch of working DJs here. So first thing first, I want to thank you guys all for tuning in tonight. I'm going to do the outro tonight. Actually, Hunter, why don't you take us out? You always got to, you always like me to take us out. 
Okay. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of the DJ Roundtable. I'll catch you all, and we'll catch you all next week. Great sound. Later, guys. Bye. Thank you.